<laughs> Japanese horror fans, rejoice. Starfruit Books is releasing in English, in both print and digital, Hiroshi Hino's The City of Pigs, the first English release of one of Hino's works in over a decade. It's incredible news, and I am so excited for it. I've already ordered a copy, and to express my excitement and spread the word, because if it sells well, maybe more of Hino's work will get English releases, I've decided to make a video talking about another of Hidoshi Hino's works available in English. Though it's not so easy to find this book. By the way, I've included a link to Starfruit Books in the description where you can pre-order The City of Pigs or browse their catalog. They have an interesting selection, and I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes on them. Published in 2006 by Dark Horse Comics, Lullabies from Hell was the first Hidoshi Hino book I ever read. I had to read an online copy because the book is, well, expensive and hard to find. Not as bad as some of his other works, Panorama of Hell goes for 250 bucks on Amazon, but Hino's work didn't catch on in the States. In fact, neither did Junji Ito's when it was first brought over, but we've seen that change. I doubt the same will happen for Hino, given the extreme content, but if Shintaro Kago shirts can sell at Hot Topic, I guess anything's possible. The back of the book reads, Hidoshi Hino has long been considered a master of the horror genre since his debut in the late 1970s, and the four stories and lullabies from hell will show you how demented the man can be. And that's no lie. The first story, the titular A Lullaby from Hell, features a ton of blood and death. There is abuse, vivisection, and an all-around disturbing mood. At the same time, it's pretty funny. That's the thing about Hidoshi Hino. He's got a sense of humor, and not in the Shaun of the Dead kind of way. This is stuff that is so grotesque that it's silly. I don't even want to try to show the worst stuff because I am positive that YouTube will not let me. It's realistic, unlike some of Junji Ito's works. People don't explode or contort their bodies, but they are savagely torn apart nonetheless. And the art shows it in a fun, cartoony way. When a person is crushed by a boulder, some of his fingers fly off. As in, the ends of his fingers just fly off. It makes no sense and is childish in its depiction. But on the very same page, a demon rips off a person's face with a lot of detail. It doesn't just become a skull. No, we see the muscles under the skin. Hino's artwork can feel simplistic a far cry from many other horror artists, but it's not because Hino lacks ability, it's just his style. And it works. His characters, for example, look deformed and out of place. They might have looked more acceptable in the 70s, but certainly, if somehow an anime adapted Hino's work now, people would not be able to handle the designs. They would just feel like they're from a different time, as well as a different genre but this helps to make the reader more uneasy. They're so weird looking, it adds to the feeling that nothing is as it should be. Also, it probably helps to make Hino's work more palatable. If his characters were realistic looking, only a very small amount of people could bear to read these comics, with the horrible things that happen to them. It's hard enough to stomach with Hino's art style. Have I mentioned that some really sick stuff goes on in this story? Just terrible. Presented as an autobiographical story, Hino tells the reader that his home life was miserable and he started focusing on bizarre and horrid things. It seemed to match his life. His unhinged mother called him a demon and would sing a song about hell, hence the title. So he collected animal parts, acquired by killing the animals, and dreamed about ruling hell, his demons murdering everyone. Then, after getting beaten up by some classmates, he discovers that he can will people to die in whatever way he wishes. The bullies get killed the way he imagined, and after being abused by his mother, he turns that power towards her, 
making her fall into a hole and dying. Only little Hino knows where his mother is, and he visits her daily to watch her body rot. Yeah, I'm sure this is autobiographical. It definitely happened, no doubt. Hino's obvious lies about his life are also part of the humor of this work. This didn't happen. That's just obvious. But that's okay. Hell, it's better that it's completely fake. Otherwise, Hino would not be likable. Though I'm sure a lot of people out there already hate him for his content, and that's fine. It is hardcore stuff. This being presented as a true story, then telling patently false things, makes the reader giggle. Or it should. None of this should be taken seriously. It's totally fake, none of it happened, it's just a story meant to entertain and perhaps scare. That's why the ending is what it is. Once Hino's past has been revealed, his many murderous deeds confessed, he tells the reader that, of course, we cannot be allowed to live. So he will use his death power to kill us three days after reading this story to keep his secret safe. Or just because he likes killing. This isn't a unique trick. It's been used in horror a lot over the decades, maybe even centuries, that people have been writing and reading horror fiction. But it's still nifty, in my opinion. And it will get some people. They will get unnerved and fear for their life because of a silly story. It happened with The Ring, after all. I love this ending. It has the ability to really frighten someone, especially if they're underage and probably shouldn't be reading anything written by Hino, and it adds to the farcical nature of the work. Yes, Mr. Hino, I totally believe that you have the power to kill people by thinking about it. I'm sure it happens all the time. Hidashi Hino is an artist whose work is hard to get through. It is so truly brutal that I cannot recommend it to anyone that doesn't know 100% what they are getting into. This is the guy that wrote and directed two of the guinea pig movies, after all. And if you don't know what those are, then go, run, get as far away from this chasm of abhorrence as you can. Or you too may end up watching these sickening movies and reading these sickening stories and loving every minute of it. That's it for Lullabies from Hell for now. I plan to discuss the entire book, but I think I'll do it one story at a time instead. If you want me to keep talking about Hidashi Hino and his work, or if there's another horror author you're interested in, let me know in the comments. Horror is one of my three big passions, the others being Gundam and queer stuff, and I will never get tired of talking about it. Also, consider subscribing to see similar videos. I already have one about Junji Ito's Hellstar Remina you can check out now. Thanks for watching, and remember, now that you've watched this video, you only have seven days. <laughs> Until it's been a week. That's, that's how long a week is. Yay! Week.